This will be a walkthrough of the new incident reporting software for EMS that the state has implemented called FieldBridge Elite. All of the city tablets in the rescues will have a shortcut on the desktop. Then double clicking that shortcut will bring you to the login screen. The login screen you will have to enter your EMT number followed by the password that you have previously created on the new Image Trend Elite site. This new software is set up for specifically touchscreens, tablets, so it should work very well with uh, our layout that we have. Once you've logged in to the screen, you will see a history of any incident that you have created. Uh, you can start creating an incident here as well. The first thing you'll need to do when you log in uh, will be to go through and fill in uh, who is on the vehicle with you. Uh, so same as we do now with Image Trend, uh, or Field Bridge rather, you will log in, you will assign the person to whatever they're doing uh, as far as roles and responsibilities. You can select multiple roles and responsibilities for each uh, person on the vehicle. You will need at least two crew members assigned um, for the state requirements for a emergency vehicle. Um, so this will be you, you as the person who is the patient caregiver, and then uh, driver during response, driver during transport. That's slightly different from how we do things now. Um, you can assign shift to whichever shift is working, and assign which vehicle you are on. Currently in this new program these two fields are not linked uh, so you have to know which EMV number which is the license plate of the vehicle is linked to that vehicle. So for rescue one it'll be 2302 and select rescue one. We're looking at having that linked together so you won't have to know that. So we can now click on Newport PCR, which will generate a new incident report for us based on the vehicle and crew information that we had previously entered. So what you'll see here, uh, unlike the current field bridge, uh, which has long pages, uh, this has somewhat relatively short pages and uh, it's subdivided into smaller menus. Uh, so again, this is uh, completely standalone. Once you have logged in, even if you lose internet connection, you can still access any of the information here. You can still fill out a complete incident report. We have our power tools down the right side again, and you will see that anything that needs to be filled out is red. So we'll start going down with the dispatch information. Uh, when you click in a field, you can enter uh, whatever the information needed is. Uh, remember with incident numbers we need to have the first two digits be the year with a dash followed by four digits. Um, when we post incidents uh, the system doesn't know year to year so incident 1 for 2015 would conflict with incident 1 of 2016 so we have to use the same uh, convention here for our incident numbers. Uh, you can see that emergency response to the scene is already filled out. This is one of the items that is uh, default because most of our uh, calls are generated from someone calling the station, 911, or another line and us needing to respond. If there is something different, uh, for instance, if it is a um, uh, service call lift or move, if it is a uh, mutual aid call, if it is um, someone that came in uh, to the station, you can obviously um, select something different. Uh, and that is true with any of these default uh, items. Uh, they just default to what is normally used. If you need to change it, you can certainly do that. With any of these fields, there's a drop down arrow where you can select the item, or you can hit the uh, list icon to the right, which will bring up the fields on the left here. So again, you can select uh, exactly which field you need. 
we have dispatch reason so again you can select from any of the choices here uh, as far as what type of uh, call you were dispatched to and then you will need to indicate a disposition for the incident did you transport the person where you canceled before getting there did the patient refuse care or otherwise not be transported. So for the purpose of this we will make this a treated and transported call. Uh, we default to ALS level of service because that is um, how we are staffed typically. If you did not provide ALS service, meaning no EKG, no IV, um, no ALS medication delivery, you can change this to BLS. Uh, if it stays on ALS, then the incident will be looking for some type of ALS information provided such as uh, EKG, IV, and so on. Number of patients it's seen, single, multiple, or none. Uh, if the call is tagged as no patient found, uh, so it could be canceled at seen, canceled on scene, no patient contact, no patient found, uh, then we would need to change that to one so it correlates to that. So we'll fill out all the fields here. This defaults to no dispatch delay. We'll go with incident address. We need to indicate the type of facility uh, we have now. Uh, as you'll see as we work through specifically with the patient information fields, we have these um, negative icons to the right. So not recorded, not applicable, uh, and so on will be shown here. So you don't know, no longer have to look those up in a field. Uh, for type of um, uh, location, um, just fill in where it was that you went to, what exactly uh, the type of facility was. So for this, we can just make this an apartment. We'll then have to input a street address. Uh, now, just as a... Um, Point of reference here, there is no longer a second address field or apartment number field. Um, when our software exports for billing, it only exports this one line. So if there is an apartment or a unit number, we need to make sure that's specified here uh, on the same line for billing purposes. Um, we can enter the location. Location lookup should get us to where we need to be. Uh, this currently does not have a favorites location. Um, that is one of the other things we are looking at integrating back in here. You can also set the GPS location uh, based on where you're at and it should input uh, the current location using wireless as well as uh, the cellular signal of the device. So you can see uh, once we've entered the address uh, because I have previously logged in and assigned a unit and I have assigned responding personnel that those fields uh, are already blue. There is no need to fill those out. Under patient information, um, we have to, of course, indicate a time. Uh, as with the current program, um, you can start out by entering the time. If you click on that clock icon, uh, it will enter the current time. If you need a not recorded, such as you didn't get to a scene and so on, um, you will have that as well. Again, we can scan our PTS band number. It is a six digit number on our PTS band. We will have to indicate acuity of our patient, uh, whether they are low acuity or green or all the way up to critical is not a mass casualty incident. We have, same as we did in previous, the field bridge that we currently use, we have a repeat patient. Um, you can look up by name. And right now this is not filled in with any patient data so you won't find anybody. The other thing you can do is you can search by address, which I find helpful if you are going to, uh, say an address we go to frequently. Um, you can do a search. It will pull up all the people when this has filled uh, in here that are from that address. You can search the unit number, apartment number, and try and find the patient you are going to prior to getting there. It gives you 
hopefully some information about the history of their medications and what the problem may be if the individual on the previous call had filled that in um, with all the information. So we'll fill in our patient information. The age automatically calculates, will indicate gender. Um, weight is uh, important if you are um, giving the patient any medication, specifically with pediatrics. So uh, if you need to import that, this will also uh, convert it to kilograms for you. So it will make the um, dosing calculation uh, easier. Patient's address, again, same as we have now, we can hit the incident address and pull that up. Um, if there's any need to fill in any other information, you can do that here as well. Uh, patient's history. So again, we can type in the box and start filling in uh, information and find what their um, past medical history is. We can hit the box here and we can search on the side. And if there's something that is not found in the list, we can type that in here as well. You indicate how you get the history, either by a bystander, or their doctor, family member, or the person themselves. Uh, we have to indicate alcohol and drug use. For patient medications, uh, again, we can search Using the list option, um, you can type in what patient medications may be uh, used by this person. Uh, if you indicate one incorrectly, you can click the X and get rid of it. If the patient does not take any medications, this um, circular button here will indicate that the person did not have any medications. Same is true for allergies. You can look up allergies uh, by hitting that list icon. If they do not have any, uh, no known drug allergies comes up by hitting that circle. That brings us to our patient assessment. Um, so we'll need to indicate uh, what is wrong with this person. Maybe they have some back pain from the fall. Uh, we will indicate the time at which that happened. The time at which it happened should be prior to you getting dispatched. Uh, the times do need to agree, so we will need to make sure that that is correct. Uh, what is nice, once you click in a time box, you get this uh, screen on the left. Uh, it indicates the time that is there. You can add, subtract, uh, or by five, or add five. Same with the date that goes with that. We need a chief complaint anatomic location, so here our back pain would be back, and our body system that is affected, so uh, musculoskeletal. We need to add the complaints of the patient, their primary complaint at a very minimum, so this person is complaining of pain, or specifically back pain. If there's a secondary complaint, we should include that as well and any other complaints. Uh, so maybe they also have um, some dizziness along with that. We would need to make sure that was included in there and as many other complaints as that person had. Then we need to indicate what our impression is. So again, you have the list view. Um, so our in in impression of this person would be maybe an injury to the lower back due to that fall. Uh, we could indicate a secondary um, uh, issue, back pain non-traumatic. If it's a fall, it would not be non-traumatic. We could put uh, pain unspecified. We could put um, anything that would be pertinent and that we find in the list here. We can also put not applicable if there is no secondary impression. 
date time last known well that's particularly important when we have any neurological uh, suspected stroke or any other uh, altered mental status uh, that gets a timeline for when that person was last okay so here we'll have to put injury involved because that person did fall the assessment tab now starts out very um, sparse you need to add everything that you do here so we can start with our vitals um, the time defaults to the time that we made contact with our patient. So if you look at the time that we arrived at our patient, it was 20.36.05. So when I go to do anything, mm -hmm. it indicates 20.36.05 by default. I, again, I can increase that if I know, well, it was about five minutes after I got there or one minute after I got there, I can adjust that as well. So we'll need to indicate the mental status for our patient. After the fall, they were uh, normal. Our neurological assessment was normal. Our skin assessment was normal. Assessment of the head was normal. So this person has no issues with their abdomen. Um, here under spine, we probably would indicate something uh, as this is a fall that we said has some low back pain. So uh, maybe some uh, lumbar pain in the, the lumbar spine, midline, or uh, sacral area. We would need to indicate that as well. We'll indicate as pain, if there was any deformity, any contusions, we would need to indicate that as well. You can select multiple items by hitting the control button and clicking on the item. So you can see now we have pain, deformity, and a laceration on that exam. The extremities, our patient here um, will have no issues with their extremities. So we can put normal for our extremities. So that will take us to the next screen, uh, if you were dealing with a cardiac patient that was a possible STEMI, uh, you will need to fill out this information. This is not applicable to this patient, so we do not need to do it. Uh, we do have a trauma patient uh, from a fall, so we will uh, start filling out what caused the fall, um, trying to track if there's any reasons that this individual is having falls or hazards around the house. Uh, so we would go through and indicate what was going on at the time of the fall. Uh, they were five feet tall and it was a fall from standing. So if they were taken to a trauma center, we would indicate the reason why they were taken to a trauma center, uh, any of the reasons why um, a person would be sent directly to a trauma center. And for our purposes, this was not a work-related injury. So for every call, we need to enter a set of vitals. So we'll start by hitting Add. We'll hit our Vital tab here. Uh, again, it defaults to the time that we got to the patient. If it was five minutes later, we'll indicate that. We can indicate who took the vitals. If it was somebody that was on an engine company that was with us, uh, we can add that as well. That's fine. We will go through and do a quick Glasgow coma scale of the patient to determine their uh, orientation, whether they are uh, affected or unaffected. And at the end of our um, filling that in, it gives us a total Glasgow coma scale. If there was an issue with that, uh, as far as obstruction to the eye that gave us an incorrect uh, assessment, uh, we would not to indicate that as well. 
So patient systolic blood pressure. We can tab through fields if we want. How we got that blood pressure, so if we took it off the machine, it should say automated pulse, whether it was regular or irregular, oxygen saturation, and what they were on at the time of that. Respiratory rate and effort. Uh, if we're getting any readings for CO on our pulse oximeter, we should indicate that if the patient is on uh, waveform capnography, so uh, an intubated patient. Um, even a patient that you are using a, um, a simple mask with uh, end tidal CO2 monitoring, you can indicate that on there as well. Uh, we have our blood glucose level. We can indicate that here. And uh, unlike the current field bridge, we have uh, temperature right in the vitals. Uh, so instead of having to do a separate procedure for temperature, that is right here and how you took it. Uh, the person's pain scale. So this person had back pain they were indicating at 6. Uh, if we had a stroke, we would indicate why, uh, or excuse me, we would indicate uh, our findings here. It's not applicable. Uh, when we did that, we would also indicate here um, uh, what kind of exam we did to get our results. So we will say negative for this. So we have a vital sign that is still indicating red uh, at this point. Uh, it is not the vitals that are triggering this to be red, but it is the fact that we indicated this was an ALS call, and we have not indicated any ALS services provided. So if I indicate a, an ALS call, I need to put, um, at the very least, an EKG um, for this person. So, for instance, uh, this patient here, we will indicate that they have a sinus rhythm. We did put them on the monitor and found a sinus rhythm. That was our interpretation. Um, if we have, at some point in the future, the ability to import, we can add the actual uh, recording and strip here. So we'll hit OK, and now we have no more red here because we have indicated our uh, ALS intervention. That brings us to the transport tab. The transport tab again defaults to Newport Hospital uh, as the closest facility. We'll have to again enter our patient acuity. We'll have to again enter the number of patients. Uh, you can see some of this is already filled out as far as our transport mode defaults to emergent response. And uh, we have a default of none uh, for delays. Uh, this is red because anytime we transport a patient, we need to have a mileage filled in. Um, what is being looked at is our loaded mileage. So from the scene to the destination. So when we have the patient in the back. So it starts with zero. And again, we have these now where we can hit one, 1 1.1, and we can go up in that manner. So now we have a mileage to the destination for billing purposes. Our narrative, uh, we have a narrative uh, that we can fill out here. Um, so it will need to be filled in. Um, currently, uh, you have uh, four default um, starting places for a narrative if you would like to use them. You will obviously need to read through that and make sure that there are no areas where you need to fill in some information. Uh, or you are welcome to write your own narrative. But these are uh, provided as a sample and starting point. You need to make sure that everything is documented that was done on the scene. Uh, anything that you put in the procedures, the assessment, uh, needs to also be included there. If I started an IV on this patient, I could use my power tool on the right side. It was peripheral vein catheterization in the left AC. One attempt, successful. Who did it? 
medication administered prior to EMS now. We gave normal saline. We can indicate the units and dosage that we gave of normal saline. If we gave something other than normal saline, for instance, uh, we gave a D10 or we gave lactated ringers, you can indicate that there as well. So our KVO rate or uh, how many milliliters we gave, so en route to the hospital we gave this person uh, a thousand liters or 500 liters, uh, milliliters, we can indicate that here as well. So that should now indicate in our uh, vitals and treatment. So we should now see under the procedures tab that we did an IV. The procedure was not completed because it didn't indicate who did it. Also on our power tools we have our airway. So if we have any advanced airway, uh, we can indicate that there. Uh, we can go down here and indicate um, whether it was successful or not, making sure that if we do have an advanced airway, how we have confirmed that and at least a couple of different methods of confirming. We have an IO power tool uh, for interosseous candelization, so we will indicate uh, I.O. was done, who did it again, and uh, whether it was prior to arrival is also read. So under the assessments, uh, we have an all normals here, so instead of going through uh, and hitting each one of those, this would probably be a faster way to do that. On our patient here, we can start by hitting all normals, and then we can go to spine, and we can say that uh, there were some issues with the uh, midline lumbar back, that they had some pain and deformity in that area. That should update us to uh, indicating that that patient had some other than normal findings in their report. The signatures section starts out blank, you will need to fill in one who completed the report and then you will need to add signatures at the very minimum for a transport you will need your signature as the primary caregiver so we will select uh, person signing as caregiver the reason signing defaults to you are the provider and then down here we will sign it does not automatically fill in your name as the primary care provider, so uh, that is currently something you need to fill in, uh, first name and then last name. Date and time, you can click for current date and time. Once that's signed, you can hit OK. As a transport, we will also need to add the health care provider at the receiving facility. So that is defaulting to transfer of patient care. You can mark that as signed. If there's for other, some other reason why a person didn't sign, you can indicate that as well. As far as transfer of care, there should be a signature from the nurse on uh, every transfer of care. I tend to ask the nurse for their last name. Um, that will kind of memorialize who signed it when the signature is unreadable. So at the very least, we should have those two signatures. Um, we can also add witnesses for a um, patient refusal. We can add the patient themselves, have them sign. If it is a minor, we can add the patient's guardian. So all those individuals can sign. So at this point, you can see we have all of our fields in blue, except our times. So we are missing our arrived at destination arrived at the hospital time. So I will click current time and our back in service time. So you can see here that because I clicked arrived at destination it made unit left seen red. 
because there is no unit left seen. Now that I've clicked that, it made my arrived at hospital time red because I can't arrive at the hospital prior to leaving the scene. You can also look at your timeline. Um, this can be important if you're on scene with a critical patient. You can um, have kind of a summary of what was done. So when you get to the ER, uh, if for instance it's a CPR, you can say exactly what time you're notified. You can have all your drugs and defibrillations and any other interventions here. Uh, so when you pass care off to the um, nurse at the hospital, you can give them that information. So at this point, I am at an 85% validation. I have now a red box under vitals. At this point, if I am unsure what the problem is, I can hit this validation button, and it'll tell me that I need a pulse every 10 minutes. It'll tell me that a respiratory rate is required every 20 minutes. And it'll tell me that a BP is required every 20 minutes. So basically it's telling me because I was with the patient for starting at 2036 to 2057, which is over 10 in 20 minutes, that I now need to indicate a second set of vitals. So I, this can be corrected by either having a shorter time with this incident, or I can add a second set of vitals to the incident here. So you can see that once that timeline of that incident was shortened, I am now up to 100% validation and nothing shows in here. To print the incident, you can hit the print button here. You will print the Rhode Island EMS patient care report or you can print the Newport Fire EPCR, which is the template that we were using. So you can see here that everything we have done on this report was filled in here. We have all of our assessment information, all of our vitals, interventions, and procedures. And everything is documented as far as a timeline, the signatures of everyone involved. So from there, you can use the Control-P function to print to whichever printer you need to print that call to. Once you are done with the incident, you can hit close, um, as we do now. Incidents do need to be posted, so we can click on this incident and we can hit post. So at the end of a call, the incident needs to be posted. If for some reason you get an error posting this call, you'll need to go back in and try and determine why there was an error. Usually it's an issue with a validation of an incident is missing something or the incident number conflicts with another incident number. So for instance, if you forgot to add the year, it may conflict with a 2014 or 2015 incident. So once the incident is posted and sent to the server, this is complete. You'll get a box that says successfully posted and you can hit OK. So all of your incidents, prior incidents, will be shown here listed. You can change the view to several different ways of looking at this. Down on the bottom you have settings as far as the system inbox if you have any messages from the state it will show there and then logging out. So for now everyone can log in to this system. You can add incidents, you can post incidents and up till the date that we migrate to this new system live uh, you can continue to do that using this for practice, and those incidents will be ultimately deleted when we go to this new system. Thank you.